criminal laws, but these companies don't even have to produce their records to the FDA if they have these tests for salmonella. And in the previous peanut contamination hearing we had with ConAgra, what happened was they had, uh, it, it wasn't as blatantly criminal as this case, but what happened in that case was they had water dripping down and they had all kinds of records that showed this. And then they, and, and they had the FDA inspectors come to the factory, but the company made this decision not to produce the records because the record showed that there was a problem. And, and so while it's true that it's, it's a criminal activity, and while it's also true that, that the FDA could use subpoena authority, it would be pretty simple for Congress to pass a law, and in fact I think it's in Mr. Jingle's bill, to say that, when, that it's also a requirement that they produce this information when they have a test that shows negative, that they produce it to the FDA and put some criminal penalties in place. And I'm sure all of you gentlemen would agree with that too. Um, you, you know, I, I don't really have any questions. I, I, I just sit here and I feel sick at heart when, when I hear you talk about your families. And, and Mr. Hurley, when I see your little kids, you know, I, I have two girls myself, so, so I, I feel sick in hearing about your, your parents. Um, it, and what makes me so sick, as I said in my opening statement, is I've been sitting here for 12 years listening to this. So, so I, guess, I guess what I'll say is I want to echo what all of you said. It shouldn't be that hard for the most sophisticated country in the world to put a system in place that requires them to provide the documents when they see, when they see a problem, that requires or that gives the FDA mandatory recall authority, which, by the way, would, would act, I think, to light a fire under these companies if they knew that there was mandatory recall authority and they couldn't mess around. And then, and then as I mentioned in my opening statement, traceability, so that, so that what happened in Oregon could happen in all the states where if you had mechanisms in place that were interoperable, then, then you found salmonella in a little kid in Oregon, you could rapidly work throughout the United States to figure out the source of that salmonella and to recall all those food, pro uh, food products. And if that happened, I, I don't think we would have lost Mr. Almer and Mr. Tusanyant's parents because, because we knew about that salmonella several months in advance. So, so I will make a commitment to you as someone who has worked on this for years, along, along with Mr. Stupak, Mr. Dingle, Mr. Waxman, our friends on the other side of the aisle, uh, we, we're going to do this. And, and I hope we'll do it this year because I don't want to be back here in six months. Neither do you, Mr. Walden or, or Mr. Ginger, any of you guys. We, we've just sat here too long listening to this. And we can fix it. I've got some legislation. We've got comprehensive legislation. We need to figure out, shall we move this one bill at a time? We could, do, we could do my mandatory recall bill on the suspension calendar next week. Mr. Walden would agree. Uh, I'll bet you Mr. Barton would agree. And, and we can do comprehensive food safety. We've been working on it for a long time. So I'll just, I'll, I'll just make the commitment to you. Uh, we're going to do this, and we're going to do this in your loved one's memories, OK? And I'll yield back. Uh, I can go ahead if you want. I recognize Mr. Burgess for five minutes. Uh, thank you. Um, 